bright. Way too bright. Anyways. Welcome to today's installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. Hey, thank you so much for watching today. Um, today, we are going to perform the throttle body cleaning on the 2006 Saab 93 2.0T. This thing. <laughs> um, she's been sitting for well over almost two weeks now. She's getting really dirty just sitting here actually. Um, she's currently out of commission or probably should be out of commission because I'm pretty sure I explained it in the last video but this strut here I think is finally uh, on its way out. Um, both front struts actually need to be replaced. They've needed to be replaced for a long time. They were in bad shape when I took possession of the car and me fixing this leaky tire and having the car up off the ground for a little bit, I think once the strut came back down, I think we messed it up. It doesn't sound as good as it used to. It didn't sound good at all, to be honest, but... Now, today, though, um, we're going to do a throttle body cleaning. <clears throat> because uh, something I've stated in the last couple of vlogs now... It's got a really weird um, idle situation going on. Well, not necessarily just an idle issue, but we also, uh, when we start it up, uh, you know, most of the time when you go to start it up for the first time, it does a stumble before it finally uh, will run somewhat normally. Uh, and then obviously the RPMs go up as it's in the warm up process. And then when it comes down to an idle, after a few minutes, it starts to stumble again for a while, and at some point it'll catch its balance, and then it'll run fine. Um, now, we did do spark plugs uh, recently because I thought maybe the spark plugs hadn't been changed in a while, um, but, you know, we took them out, we, uh, we looked at them, they really didn't look all too bad, um, and then we put the exact uh, same ones in, the ones that Saab uh, strongly recommends for this particular engine uh, in the owner's manual has the exact you know part and stuff and that's exactly what we put in they were NGK plugs I thought I might have still had the box around here somewhere I might have thrown it out but they were uh, laser platinum plugs from NGK and um, the spark plugs did help a little bit when you're driving the car I did notice that when it is you know, when you're at a stoplight and it's, you know, still in gear and stuff, when it is at idle, it's actually running smoother in that aspect. And uh, it, it may have actually brought a little more uh, power, you know, when you need it. Now, this car was already, you know, pretty strong in my opinion uh, when you go to, you know, kind of hammer on the gas. But I feel like with the new plugs in it, uh, there is a little more oomph, um, you know, when you're like in passing and such. Uh, so... I gave it some thought afterwards, and I, you know, uh, did think of uh, the time when I had my 2008 Grand Prix. Sometimes when you would go to start that, uh, it would not start at all. It would start to run, and then it would just die immediately. And I thought um, of that solution there, which was cleaning the throttle body. We cleaned the throttle body on that one, and that uh, fixed the issue. So I never had a no-start condition with the Grand Prix after the throttle body cleaning. I still have people commenting on some of the really old videos of that situation. And every time they comment, I say the same thing. The throttle body cleaning is what fixed it for me. So, um, this car being just shy of 200,000 miles, it's probably never had a throttle body cleaning in its life. Um, so I think we're going to do that today. This sub is a 2.0T model, which means it has the 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder engine. Um, I believe this is probably the most common ish engine that these uh, vehicles have had. So um, the throttle body is actually under this here um, custom painted cover, courtesy of my stepsister. And it really shouldn't be all too difficult to um, take off and clean. Um, we're going to disconnect the battery first, <coughs> excuse me, and then 
we are going to take this cover off and from there there's a couple of other things we have to obviously you know disconnect um, this uh, intake charge pipe has to obviously come off um, maybe a couple of uh, sensors got to be disconnected obviously the throttle body is drive by wire so we do have to disconnect the actual wiring harness for that and um, that's it and then I do have to go to the um, well what's left of a Saab dealership not far from here um, <laughs> But we have to get a new um, throttle body gasket because it is a flat gasket and I'm sure especially at 200k if we should never really reuse flat gaskets like that anyway so um, yeah we're going to get a new gasket for that also and uh, I'm actually obviously we're gonna do that um, before we we start taking this apart just to make sure that we have it they did say they had it in stock so uh, hopefully that is uh, the truth so what we're going to do now is usual, you know, as usual, uh, I'm going to start it up. It has not been started um, in three days at this point. Um, I'm going to see how it acts uh, upon startup and see if it does the thing with the idle. I'm also going to bring the uh, Altel out and I'm going to hook it up. And I actually want to kind of see the um, see if it gives me any kind of data pid on throttle body position, you know, or the amount of you know air kind of going you know in or supposedly going in through the throttle body and then um, after it's cleaned you know I want to see if it's going to actually change um, you know if, if there's that much carbon and and gunk surrounding it that throttle body could be obviously in more of an open position or in more of a restricted position than it should be so not a bad idea to clean these out. I started actually reading upon the topic of these throttle bodies and I guess they are um, in a lot of cases an issue uh, throughout the Saab 2.0s. So if, um, you know, if we can save it, then hopefully we won't have any further issues. Um, so again, not a bad idea to give this a cleaning and just see if it improves uh, the, these little small issues that, that are going on. All right, so we got the Tech 2 hooked up. Let's see what live data has. I didn't start the car yet, but I do have the key over so that way we can get the information for this engine here. There's the throttle, oh there we go, throttle opening area. Not 100% sure how to read this. <laughs> MM2. Now the car is not on, that might be kind of high, you know. Um, that's really all that I want to see. So we'll go ahead and start it. I will put you guys under the hood just in case she does act up and you guys will get a first person view and then as you know usual I will let it run for you know a few minutes and we will then um, see if it acts up as it's coming down to an idle it shouldn't take too much that thing says it's 90 degrees but that thing is wrong so let's get you guys underneath and see what happens So I brought the scan tool out also, and as we can see, or try to see, the throttle opening area did close a little bit. It is a 45, 46 right now. So that's probably because it is still, um, it's still, you know, trying to warm up. Uh, the fact that it's actually warmer out here now and the air isn't as cold and as dense going into the engine, uh, I was wondering if maybe that's another reason why it's actually starting up pretty decently now. Alright, so now we're starting to come down to an idle. 
We are throttle opening area is at 28, 20, between 27 and 28. Let's see what happens here. Wish I can record both of you guys and the scan tool at the same time, but my cord's not long enough. And the sun's kind of crappy. We're between 26 and 27 now, so it's slowly closing, it seems. Yeah, so she's, she's slowly closing up, probably because we're trying to get idle going. 25, 25 and 26. Oh. Alright, so the throttle opened during those sputters there. So we're around 24 and 25. It went up to about 32. I was watching it when it was doing that. We are taking a lot of fuel away too. That's kind of interesting. A lot of fuel away. I wonder if that's just it for today. <laughs> That wasn't as bad as I was expecting. Um, so we're looking between 24 and 25 now for our throttle opening area. Our short fuel trim, we're adding fuel now. I honestly, I'm not 100% sure how accurate some of the data with this Altel is on this particular car because this um, I, I just don't know it being a Saab. We'd probably maybe get more accurate data from a Tech 2, but uh, I mean, this is what we have here. But um, That's probably all that it's going to do right now. Um, so our throttle opening area is down to 23 it looks like. I think the main event's over. <laughs> yeah, so uh, 23.4, 23, 22. She's still trying to close up, it seems. Yeah, like this thing. This thing never changes. So I don't know if uh, there's an issue there or if it's the computer. Same thing with uh, when I've looked at misfire counters on this thing. That's there. They know they don't change. They just stay there. So I don't know if the Altel is picking up accurate information from the PCM or not. Still a little bit shaky this morning. Where's our coolant temp at? Where are we? 138 degrees. Throttle opening area is still closing up. 22, 21. So I'm kind of anxious to see if uh, you know this number changes at all. Uh, once we, uh, you know, do the the cleaning, let's open the throttle up a little bit just to see what. Yeah. Mm. 
and it goes back to the low 20s. Alright, so I think we're pretty much done with this for now. Um, I don't want it to get too hot because we're going to be back under there and it's going to be extremely hot today. It's actually 10, quarter after 10 in the morning because I want to get this over with because it's going to get hot real fast. So get out of all this information here and uh, that's about it. It's a good thing the Grand Am still has air conditioning. Because it's going to be really, really hot today. Alright, so we will leave her be for the time being. Let it cool off a little bit. And we will come back and uh, do our throttle body cleaning. $3.14 later, we have a new Saab throttle body gasket. Alright, and just like that, we're back home. Um, should be cool enough by now. I... Uh, I also went and, oh, hi Tempest. I also went to eat some lunch, so, um, yeah, she shouldn't be that warm. We didn't really have it on long enough anyway. <laughs> like I said, it's getting pretty warm out here. Um, so anyway, yeah, so, uh, we're going to go ahead and get to work. All right, and then that's gonna expose quite a few things here. Obviously our throttle body, our uh, PCM, and uh, a couple of other things. Um, I did f almost forget, I did want to disconnect the battery just for safe measure, um, since we are gonna be disconnecting electrical stuff. Let's get this hose out of here. This comes off, and then there's the battery. So I'm just going to disconnect the negative side, and uh, we're going to get like a uh, a rag or something to just lay over top, so that way the um, you know it doesn't make contact with with anything else. Okay. Might need two hands for this because that cable's kind of short. There, and then that way it won't make contact with anything. Um, so then, now what we have to do is we have to get this pipe off, and I'm willing to bet it's going to be a struggle. That thing there looks awful. Ooh, that hose clamp. I might need to go get another extension. Um, not even sure what size that's going to be. I could use a flathead screwdriver, but either way. I don't think that dude is going to be very happy coming off. All right, so so we did manage to get that off, and, and you know, in all honesty, I probably should go buy a new one. This thing is pretty corroded, and even untightening it, it was kind of sketchy sounding. But it did loosen up, and uh, now we can get this off. But I don't know how easy this is going to come off. It's on there pretty good which is what I was expecting so I'm gonna have to take a flathead screwdriver <clears throat> and uh, oh there it is I was gonna say I brought one out we're gonna have to pry around the, the edges of it a little bit I think hopefully this is long enough all right there we go and uh, whoo the smell of gasoline interesting I'm not exactly sure where I want to put this. Um, 
I guess it'll be alright if it folds up like that for now. It's not gonna stay. Okay. Alright. So there we go. Um, so now, this is a bracket, I believe, this thing here. So we need to uh, take this off with these. Those are also looking kind of weird. Um, 10. 10, okay. Wasn't expecting the uh, small ratchet to break them free. But they did. All right. Now this bracket's also holding this uh, sensor on. Not 100% sure what that is. That might be, is that our EVAP purge valve maybe? Possibly, I do see a vacuum line attached to it. Could be an EVAP line. I see a vacuum line on this too, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, that one's running down to this, that's probably something to do with the turbo. Maybe it's like a uh, boost sensor or something, I don't know. Oh, don't drop that. Okay. So I wonder if this will. Okay. Uh, from the feel of it, it is pretty tight. We do have to get it pretty much entirely out of the way to get to that last stud there to get the throttle body off from the looks of it. Um, so I may have to actually unhook that line there at the bottom. Got to be very careful because everything is so frail feeling, you know. Um, so let me work on that. I might unhook this connector here, which that was easy. All right, so I actually discovered an easier solution instead of trying to mess with those lines. I actually slid that, what I'm assuming is the purge valve, I assume, <laughs> but I slid it off of here. Uh, so then that way, this uh, this can come out of the way somehow. I could probably do the same on that thing. Can we slide this out somehow? The corrosion around this thing is awful. This whole this whole thing is actually pretty awful looking. Because yeah, I really don't want to disrupt any more of these lines. Ah, you know what? It's sitting like this. That might be okay. That might be all right because it's out of the way a little bit. All right, that might do. We might try it like that. Um, so here, this is our actual throttle body connector. So we need to unplug that. And I don't think there's anything else attached to the throttle body at this time. So from here, we should be able to just loosen up those bolts, and I'm assuming they're still 10s. Yep. Top two, yep, okay. All right, and then, uh, we could get that thing off of there. All right, so we got these four bolts out. The two, uh, you know, the studs, you know, obviously come out of the bottom side, and the, the two actual bolts with the, the heads came out of the top so it is at this point in time that this throttle body should just come right off and it is it's also very very crucial that any nothing get into that throttle body and there's our gasket so the gasket just came right off all of the stuff just falling off of this thing oh yeah that's pretty nasty looking in there oh yeah I mean it's Possible that that really could have been our culprit right there. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so we'll just carefully set that down. The gasket came right off. See some oil in there. Yeah, even. Even the get look at the gasket, it's 
Looks like it's just kind of, it's never, never been changed, I guarantee it, so. Um, all right, and then from there, we need to get, um, we're gonna wipe the, the surface down. Um, doesn't look too bad, but we just wanna wipe some stuff out and also kinda get something down in there so nothing large or small fall, falls in into that intake. All right, so I stuck one like shop towel in there. Didn't want to stick a whole bunch in there just because, um, you know, I don't want it to get bunched up and tear and stuff. And next thing you know, there's something stuck in there that we don't know about. So I just stuck one in there. Didn't really push all the way down in. It's just, you know, just there. And then I got a blade because uh, where that other gasket felt like it was like puffing up, you know, around the side there. Um, I can still kind of feel it on the surface. So even though the rest of this is all nice and smooth, I just want to try to carefully, you know, go back and forth. And I just want to get it so I don't feel that anymore. Because I can actually see some of the stuff moving over to the side of the, uh, of the edge there. So the mark is probably not going to go away. The mark is going to stay there which is fine just as long as much like when I did the intake and head gaskets on you know the Grand Am and stuff if there's a mark there it's okay as long as you don't feel the change in the surface you know what I mean so if we can run our fingers over the mark and not feel anything raised up or anything it feels as smooth as the rest of it then you should be okay So far, it's feeling a lot better. I can still feel just a little bit around the edge there, but for the most part, that feels pretty decent. So I'll work on it just a little more. Maybe try to get uh, some of the stuff around the edges here, and we should be we should be good to go. So let me finish with that, and I will see you guys in a second. All right. So we got that smoothed out pretty well. We uh, wiped up, wiped down the rest of the surface also, and you kind of hear. Sounds pretty smooth. You can get that squeaky noise. So that side should be okay to go. So now it's time for the actual throttle body cleaning. And uh, it's quite a bit to clean. The surface on this one don't look too bad. We'll probably. You know, we're obviously going to wipe it all down, but as far as, like, the corrosion and stuff sticking to the gasket surface, don't look too bad. Um, whew, I can't believe all of the corrosion around that. That's, ugh. So we're going to go over to the porch. We got our throttle body cleaner over there, and uh, uh, we're going to get started. All right, so here we are, baking in the sun. <laughs> um, sorry if the lighting is going to be an issue because uh, the sun is directly over top at this point. Must be close to noon. Anyway, so we've got our throttle body here. See how disgusting it is on the outside and inside. Um, so we got a couple of cans of, uh, you know, throttle body cleaner only because this one's almost empty and this one has a little more in it also. Um, I also went to the dollar store and bought a couple of soft toothbrushes. This is what I've used uh, every time I've done a throttle body cleaning is a toothbrush with the soft bristles. Um, it's kind of easier to work with and you know the bristles being soft uh, is good too because you don't want to use anything abrasive uh, you know on the inside on the throttle plates and on the you know the actual chamber there um, so I brought two out because I'm going to use one to kind of maybe clean up some of the stuff on the outside and then that way I got another one for the inside so that way we're not carrying any any debris stuck in the toothbrush you know um, so that's where we're going to start and uh, 
try not to uh, you know get anything on or, or inside that connector cavity there for the for the plug for the wiring harness so I do have the gloves on because I don't want the chemicals to stay on my hands today but I guarantee you these are going to tear in a matter of minutes because my hands are already sweaty thank you son So I don't know if this is really going to do anything well for the outside. But probably not. I just want to make sure that there's nothing loose really that's going to like possibly fall back into the intake when we go to put it on. That's kind of what I'm you know, trying to do here. So I'm just going to cut the camera for the moment, uh, but this is pretty much what we're going to do. We're just going to go around and spray and just try to wipe stuff off, and I'll let you guys know when we get to the actual inside part of that. Alright, so as to be expected, we've already got our first few tears in our gloves. Whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like it really did, you know, much. Obviously, you know, it's, it's aluminum, and it's going to take a little more of like sanding or something to get all the actual stuff off but um, you know we were scraping it around with the brush and uh, you know ended up with a pile of like you know some dirt and stuff that was on the cardboard that I got rid of so that way we can set this back down um, this can's pretty much done so yeah good thing we had two so now we're gonna do the actual inside this will you know we'll take a little more of our time with this one I'm gonna start with the front first Get my clean brush and I'm just going to carefully go around. We're getting to the good stuff now, I think. All right, so we're pretty much done with it. So here's our finished product. Um, the toothbrush, you know, helped. It, it was so gunked on there, but the toothbrush helped at least, you know, start to break it up. Um, and then, you know, eventually just started smearing it around. So we took the um, the shop towels. They're not that, you know, rough. They're actually, when they get wet, they're quite soft. And we just kind of carefully, you know, wiped out the rest of it. Um, there's a couple of spots here and there that were a little difficult to get to and the plates pretty much stained. But it should be a lot better than it was compared to, you know, like I couldn't get this off. I tried a couple of little spots here and there, but overall we should see. I'm expecting to see some sort of uh I'm expecting to see some sort of improvement uh you know when we put it back in all right and now we're back to the car itself so we're at the point of reassembly um, I did go to the parts store just now and I did get a brand new worm drive clamp for replacement of this one because I don't trust that one <laughs> this, one's a, this one's a lot better looking so, i try to get this over top of this, so we don't forget about it. There we go. Alright, so now we're going to pull this out. Nice and carefully. 
There we go. There's nothing in there. It all came out just fine. Like I said, one square. There we go. There's our there's our square in one piece. And uh ah, stupid bugs. Worst thing about being in the grass is you get the bugs that like to fly, you know, around and stuff. Now what I'm gonna do is I have a little bit of um dielectric grease here and I'm just gonna put a teeny amount on maybe like two corners of that something, something stuck to my finger so I couldn't use that one so I'm just gonna put like here maybe a dab there and only to maybe you know help keep the gasket from moving around once it's sitting on there so that's really all I did that for here's the gasket I stuck it between the battery <laughs> and, and the uh, other thing so we'll open this up and get it on there if you're not sure which way it goes you can probably use the old gasket like I am so looking at the back side of this this is the flush side you look at the other side you can kind of see how things are raised and stuff so this side here would be the throttle body side and this side here is the intake side so it came off just like this if uh, you didn't notice yep there she goes got the gasket on there got the holes all lined up I'm gonna need two hands for this because I want to be as steady as possible but we are now ready to throw this back on. All right, so that's on. There are no dowels, by the way. There's nothing there to really hold the throttle body in place. So it is literally, you gotta get that gasket to stick. You gotta line up all the holes and make sure you can get the bolts through them hand tight first, of course, or, you know, start them in by hand. And uh, go for, <laughs> go. Go for it from there. So it was very, uh, very sketchy process, but I'm gonna say we managed. And uh, at this point, there probably is a torque spec for this. I don't have it, so I'm just carefully. Just gonna bugs. I'm just carefully uh, going through. very lightly and making sure they're all snug up. Especially with a longer ratchet, ratchet you just gotta be careful. Whew, man, I'm sweating. Yeah, that should be good. Just gotta make sure, you know, the gasket's tight up against both surfaces. And That should be it. All right. So now we can throw this thing on, on these studs here. Let's not forget to put this thing on. And it just sits on that. And we take these guys and throw that there. Blue way. The wind's picking up now, feels kind of good. Put this guy here. We didn't have to unplug anything else uh, other than the throttle body itself, so. Let's plug this back in. I forget where this guy was. I think it was maybe like that. 
And now we can put the charge pipe on. Alright, so that is it. Um, so all that's back on. We got that plugged in. We can plug this guy, even though I don't think we really needed to, but it's back on. Uh, all that's tightened down. We didn't mess with any of these. So I think uh, we're good to hook the battery up, start it up, see what it does. covers off for now just in case something went wrong but we should be all right all right now I'm not expecting it to act um, stumbly or anything because we did start it up already today even though it's been sitting for a while but with it being hot it's probably not gonna you know do anything I'll uh, hook the all up too and see if we see a difference in that uh, throttle body opening this key has been acting weird I don't like it there it goes all right all right it is hot in here here we go No check engine light, so that's good. Unless it's a two trip thing. <laughs> but I think we're gonna be all right. Right there for now. All right, let's get the Altel hooked up. All right, so she's getting ready to come down from idle, so I'm kind of curious to see what happens. She did it. Unless she's got to adjust, but I, I may have not, may not have been our cure. Like I said before, I'm probably not going to spend a whole lot of time and energy trying to figure out why it does that, because for the most part, it runs pretty decently. Oh, look at our throttle body area, though. It has drastically changed. Um, fuel is definitely being taken away from the looks of it. Unless it's got to adjust to there being a cleaner throttle body. But it does look like the throttle body opening has uh, definitely changed. It is no longer in the 20s. It's in the teens, and I wonder if that is where it's supposed to be. <laughs> we reset the PCM by unplugging the battery, so I wonder if all of my misfires are. Oh, maybe they're act. Maybe they're current. 
Maybe it doesn't reset unless you reset the car, but that was probably when it was all stumbly. They're not going up now, so I'm assuming there's no missing. Engine oil temperature is 113 degrees. Our coolant temp is 127. Running between 8 and 900 RPM from the looks of it. This guy here is still showing me in the red. I wonder if that's related to another sensor. Maybe there's another sensor on here that's bad and maybe that's why it's running the way it is. Who knows? Fuel trims are getting a little bit better. But yeah, this throttle body opening has definitely changed. Uh, due to our cleaning, it looks like. I guess what I'll do is uh, I guess we'll just have to give it some time maybe see if it does change anything in time or if uh, you know something else is going on and we'll revisit it later I don't know I did also hear something uh, I read something about the uh, PCM being so close to the engine too, they actually make like a spacer kit that you throw behind there to keep it a little further away from the engine because I guess that's another known issue too is those things end up getting toasted because of the heat of the engine. So maybe that's something to play around with later on, I don't know. Oh, that's what the clicking noise is. This guy here, that's the noise. Uh, I kept hearing something click a while ago, and I was like, what is that? It's this guy. I can feel it. All right, so let me throw the covers on and uh, call it a day because I'm toasting. All right, so we're pretty much all done under here. Everything's all cleaned up, buttoned up. Ready to just sit here for who knows. another month or so. Uh, it's way too hot to just stay in here, so we're not going to stay in here. Um, yeah, look at that. So we're down to like 10, 11. Fuel trim seemed to be doing better, so it's probably because it was still warming up. It's probably in closed loop now. Which means all that stuff should be uh, done. The misfires didn't change. EVAP command. That's probably that clicking noise we hear is that. I'm assuming that's an EVAP purge. Yeah, that's all my data. 177 degrees. 91 degree air intake temp. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's pretty impressive. We got it to actually increase dr drastically, or decrease, I should say. But either way, we do, we did see an improvement after cleaning. It's probably better if the number is in this area, is my assumption. Yeah, those aren't changing, so we're done. It's too hot. I'm glad we got it done and over with. Um, even though it really, at this time, didn't seem to change anything, you know, um, when you mess with a car, you always want a better outcome, but as long as it doesn't run worse <laughs> than it did um, before you touched it, then... And you did okay, that's what I say. 
Oi, I'm gonna be burnt. Um, we're done. So, it really wasn't that bad of a process. Uh, like I said, definitely well worth doing because there was a lot of gunk and stuff there. Um, took a little while to do. And uh, now that we got it, you know, looking good, and apparently it's operating better from what I can see there in the numbers, I'm, I'm satisfied. So, that's it. I'm gonna go in the house, cool off a little bit, and then I do have another vlog to film uh, from the desk for the vlog after this one. It's actually in regards to a YouTube comment that I got on a recent video. It happens to be about Mike's Vehicle Spotlight. So if you're interested in knowing what I gotta say about that, check out the next video. In the meantime, thumbs up, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Whew, take care.